Hello and welcome everyone to the 12th of August edition of the Kubernetes Contributors Summit Organization Meeting for North America 2024, which is going to take place at Monday, November the 11th in 2024. Uh, please uh, note that this meeting is under the code of conduct, which basically means be nice and excellent to you each other and uh, the, follow, um, the other people inside of the meeting. All right. Um, yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, from lead side, we had uh, last week a quick session with together with content uh, where we also talked about the unconference slots and the time slots and um, which rooms are uh, uh, how, how the rooms are structured and uh, also where we had breaks and explained a little bit how the uh, how we did it uh, in Paris and how it was been done in Chicago. Um, to, there came up a discussion and uh, also thanks Josh for, for raising this in, in, the, in the channel before. Um, and I think that we should bring this discussion into this round um so that we can probably talk about this which is basically the uh transition times between sessions um especially uh, given uh given the location um i have the video here and i also have the plan here somewhere give me a second It's loading. My internet is slow. All right. Um, so we have, when we let me quickly share my screen. When we have a look at the session rooms, um, we have basically for most of the most of the session rooms, we have uh, it's two rooms. So it's two fifty five. Um, that uh, is separate uh, will be separated in in, in different subrooms, uh, and it's uh, two fifty four, which is basically the the big room. Um, I would ex exclude two fifty three out of the whole discussion because um, doc folks usually, um, at least this was my experience in Chicago and in um, Paris. Um, People go in this dock room and stay there for quite some long time and do stuff, um, which is also nice. So I, I think that the main the main route we need to discuss is uh, the walkway from 255 to 254, because this is the critical route um, that we need to take into consideration. Um, and Janelle provided, thankfully, a video for this. And I just, yes. And um, I will link to, I will put the link into the chat. Uh, Jean, thanks for the floor plan virtual tour link. And when we share this tab, um, it basically starts with, this is the 255 room. So once you leave meeting space 255, you walk down the square. And the rest of the meeting space is up this ramp. Other three rooms are right here. 255, excuse me, 253A, B, and 254ABC. So this is there would then be the main hall room. So the walkway from so 255 to 254 
is we had 250 roughly one minute yeah and i'll point out that's that's one minute of somebody who is not first of all is not coming out of the room she's starting from the lobby and um and it isn't full of other kubernetes contributors who want to say hi the um so like I look at that from an ops perspective and I'm like, okay, we need a full five minutes for people to get between those. Um, and to have a full five minutes to get between them, you need to have more than five minutes between sessions on the schedule. The problem is if we if we extend the or if we extend the time between sessions then we need to reorg the whole plan yeah. um, and also need to reorg lunch breaks and breaks. Well, so I mean, my perspective is we either do it now or we do it at the event because if we only allow five minutes between going for people to go from 255 to 254, then we're just going to start everything in 254 late. And, and after a couple sessions starting late, we will have to push back the schedule on the fly. I mean, this also depends a little bit on what sessions we accept, right? If it's yeah. uh, or if if we if we put half hour sessions or if we have twenty five minute sessions in, and we re reduce them, I think it's easier to take some time out of an hour session, or a fifty minute session, than to take out of a half half hour session. Any any comments yeah. from <clears throat> now? Now, one thing I was actually wondering: we're going to have something in two fifty-five the whole day, yeah? Yeah, it's the main room. It's the main room that is going to be recorded. So this is the room that will be recorded okay. because this is the the so, big central room. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really every time slot that people are going to be going in between. And I mean, people need to work, uh, uh, especially there, because lunch will be, uh, lunch will be in two fifty-five uh, in one of the two fifty-five rooms. Well, I'm less worried about people being late for lunch. No, no, but... the other way around. After lunch, going oh, back. After lunch. Well, after lunch is a different thing. But but we're only giving. Wait, how much time are we giving for lunch? Sixty. An hour. Sixty. An hour. That's better to read. The problem is that we already needed to crop up a little bit because uh, we need to have um, uh, the awards. Uh, because in for the European planning, we didn't have to account into the awards, right? Um, so we are losing another half an hour. Not losing, but you know what I mean. It's uh, we we need to take this into consideration. Uh, James, we are the only one, the only we are the only event that is happening in this venue at this day, so it's only us. Okay, thank so you. The, the only the only um, people uh, the the only disturbance for people are people that are at the same event, and that's what Josh said. It's basically running into other contributors. Yeah, well, and the fact that. You know, and if you're looking at this, sessions never quite end. Most sessions don't end quite on time. So if the session is supposed to end at 55 minutes after the hour, it actually ends at 57 minutes after the hour. Um, the um, uh, unless we're, you know, really aggressive about enforcing um, the time limits. The um, so. Um, you know, and, and so like, I look at things like, Hey, if we want, you know, if we actually want for people to have a full five minutes travel time, then it has to be 10 minutes on the schedule. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we had, um, we had in, in Amsterdam, there was also the, there was this 
there was an even farther um, separation of rooms uh, as far as I also can um, can remember. So you needed to go upstairs and then into the hall and then into another hallway to get into the rooms. Um, this is what I also can remember. The problem is I don't have, I can't, yeah, the, that's exactly what I, I was wondering. Does anyone have access to the EU 2022? Yeah, it was actually... No, three. Uh, three. Yeah, Jeremy, actually, we had a similar distance to what we're dealing with here um, for Chicago. And, um, you know, where you've got basically a couple hallways away. And we tried to do just five minute gaps between sessions. And the result was basically a lot of the sessions starting five minutes late. Which is which is why I was looking for this when I was looking at the video. I I, w I would argue oh, Chicago was was worse from just okay. from the distance. Chicago yeah. was worse because you needed to pass into the other building more yeah. or less over the bridge. Okay. I couldn't remember which one it was. They all kind of blurred together. Yeah. Uh, and and that one particularly, I felt like um, I was rushing between yeah. things because I ended yeah. up wanting to go to things that were completely yeah. no, on the actually, opposite. Yeah. Amsterdam was nice. Amsterdam, the rooms were all clustered together. Um, um, and I would love to have that again, but but we don't get that this time. I, I like Paris. Paris was room wise perfect because it was next. Each room was next next to each other, except dog sprint. Okay, that's a, a different story. But the session rooms have been next to each other. Yeah, I mean, for um, most of these, the, you know, the two fifty five things won't be much of an issue. It's going to be that two fifty five to two fifty four walk. Yeah, How many? Actually, Oh, go ahead. You're, James raised an important question, and and this is why I would actually like we need to talk to um, our staff because I'm not clear from that video whether you had to go down the stairs from 255. I would if guess you had to go there's down probably... the stairs from 255. We have to allow extra time for wheelchair users. Yeah, there's probably yeah, another an another elevator. route, but it was in yeah, the right. video. But oh, that's the thing. If there's an elevator, route, there's an elevator. That's... Just takes longer. Yeah, exactly. So if there's another route, someone who's in a wheelchair will take longer to make the same. Yeah. So that looks like you have to go down the stairs yeah, yeah, to but, get but, to the hallway to 254. Let, let, a half flight. There's the elevator. Yeah. There's the elevator. So the beginning of the video sure. was like, you okay. see the elevator there? And then... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's basically the elevator is next uh, directly in front of the room, and then you go down. So interesting. So 255 is not actually on the same level as 254. Even the though funny it's the thing same is, floor it is, on the map. Yeah, it is technically on the same level, but the problem is that you go like this half level down, and then the ramp up again. Because this is 255. Ah. So this is 250. So so when, when, you, when you look at this, this is the room with the stairs. And then when we go back to the second video, it's basically the same the same stairs. So you leave meeting space there you go down. And then the, the elevators the ha have been behind you. And then you go forward onto this ramp. The only problem that I currently see is how hard it is to get up okay, this ramp for someone a, in the wheelchair. B. No, I don't. I don't see there's a problem. It's just you know we have to give them the extra minute to get the elevator and get down the elevator because yeah. there's an elevator right there, and and I'd be surprised if it didn't drop them, um, the half floor down because why would you even have an elevator there if it doesn't? Yeah. The um, uh, it would be really lovely. One one of my real frustrations with the Salt Palace is their interactive map does not show any of the stairs or escalators or elevators on it. Which is a real source of frustration for me. Um, the um, it's it's relatively useless, honestly, as a thing. It feels like they farmed it out to a subcontractor who never actually visited the venue. So um, the um, yeah. Anyway, so that reinforces this. We can wait until we get. I mean, because 
I, I don't feel like we have a way around needing the extra transit time. That, that we either allow for the extra transit time or everything starts late. I mean, so we would basically look at. Can you go back to the schedule? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I switched to the schedule and uh, didn't. Let's try this and I hope it doesn't break. <laughs> This doesn't appear to be automatically calculating anything. It is. It's changing the times. Oh, it is? OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? It's jumping. OK. But then we probably need to get rid of a half hour session and yeah. just, I mean, that's not that much of an issue, right? So saying, because another option would be keep them 30, but we have four sessions between the morning break and lunch. If we dropped one of those time slots, then we could spread I out those would three. Drop this. I will honestly would well, drop this session. I, I would say one of the other hour. things is, given that the afternoon is unconference, how many unconference sessions do we have that are half an hour? None. That's exactly why I would basically scrap this time slot. That is after the, the afternoon break. Yeah. And then I would have, we would have two unconference because I want to have at least five unconference time slots because last uh, in Paris, yeah. we had the, um, it was like four sessions and one was moved into the morning, uh, which was then not attended so much. And I would like to have at least five unconference slots yeah. blocked out of the schedule. If it, yeah. So what we could basically do is we could remove this and then I think my Excel will break. Yeah, it will break. Uh, give me a second. B. Okay. So we would end at 515, which would be good because that's the usual ending time that we that we usually have we would only have a 1 hour session after in the afternoon after after the afternoon break but we would have basically 35 minutes okay so 25 minutes for 25 minutes for um talk and um 5 minutes for action if we have an hour slot they just have a little bit more time. Would this be reasonable? Sounds good to me. So this means that the advertised length of the sessions would be 30 minutes or 55 minutes. Is that right? No, the, the, well, the 25. advertised 25. 20, yeah, so 25, 25 and, 50. and 25 and 55, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, 55 because yeah. it's 35 plus 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one hour and oh, 10. So yeah, basically they the, the one hour sessions could be exactly one hour that you then have 10 minutes of uh, um, translation. Right? Yeah. 35 minutes plus 35 minutes is 70 minutes. And you have an hour session and then you have 10 minutes to get around. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, then it brings us basically to. But currently, you have them in the sixty minute, not the seventy. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have those transition time scheduled with the one hour ones. I I have. If I have a one hour session, yeah, that just... is the only yeah, it's missing there. The other ones, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, it's missing. Yeah. It's missing down yeah. there. But um, basically. 
uh, you don't need to have a transition time uh, uh, after okay, steering right, AMA yeah. because we still have the contributor callout, right? Yeah. And right. we have mm -hmm. a break, so I can basically, I, I would skip this so that we save some yeah. time so people could move around in the break as well. Um, then we have the, the normal sessions. And uh, after the break, I don't want to have, uh, I, I would not go for, for, for transition time. And then we have the, uh, the 60 minutes of awards and unconference sessions, they just have to end. If they, they want to see the awards, then they just have to end after like 55 minutes, which is fine in my opinion, because that's also how it, how it usually went. And then we have the group photo and then we have an hour break until uh, not, not close to an hour, 45 minutes to, uh, to get to the celebrations. I mean, this depends also on, um, where the celebrations is. And I think Xander, you'd have not yet any spaces, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 If the celebration is really close by, we might be able to push it, push that back a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Most of the hotels are very close to the Salt Palace. Yeah. Um, so people dropping their stuff off is not going to take very long. Yeah. All right. This looks good for everyone. Everyone is happy. Great. The only thing, and uh, Brienne, this is now for you. Uh, this would basically mean that we would adjust um, break times and lunch times for a bit. Is I hope this is possible. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, once we have the final times for everything, then I will let our food and beverage manager know and she'll make the adjustments that are needed. Perfect. That's great. Okay. Then we are settled on this. Great. Um, this was the most an urgent pressing topic from my side. Um, let me quickly write this on times adjusted to mean all right great then Brian uh, up to you uh, CNCF updates all right so I don't have a ton today, but um, last week we did receive an email to our CNCF inbox um, from a potential Kubernetes um, attendee, and they suffer from ADHD, and we're wondering if it would be possible for us to make an accommodation for them. Uh, they said that their request would be to receive all of the presentations like ahead of time. Uh, whether it be a PDF or a video or something, um, that it helps them to be able to take notes and like really read through everything prior to the event so that if on site they get distracted, they don't miss something. Um, I know we've never done this in the past, but I was wanting to throw it out there to see kind of what everyone's thoughts were, especially the content team. Um, I know logistically it can be difficult to collect, you know, all of the presentations and then um, you know, put them in a drive or whatever and to distribute them. But um, since we did have somebody reach out, I wanted to, you know, make sure that we kind of discuss it and see what we can come up with to hopefully make this person's life a little bit easier. Um, you know, and I'm sure it would also benefit other attendees as well. So just wanted to throw yeah, that Yeah, I'm thinking deaf and hard of hearing. I think we can... We can ask um, all of the uh, all of the speakers to uh, submit the slides beforehand. Um, I, I I don't know regarding a video recording because this might be too much too much effort um, yeah. on top of uh, on top of everyone. Um, we can definitely ask, but I I think we cannot we cannot force people because. When I look at myself, I'm really bad at providing slides before, like two hours before I have to talk. Yeah. 
<laughs> I know. I yeah. mean, I've, I've definitely the, seen people on site making changes and edits. I probably would be one of them as well. So <laughs> I completely yeah, understand the, that. <laughs> although if we do, if we do a reach out to speakers, etc., um, and we specifically say that this is for folks with disabilities, um, I think it'll it'll end up making a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Um, because I mean, honestly, if you're for any of these things, even if they're only doing it the day before, it still is helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as long as they have access to them prior to the sessions, I think they would be happy with that. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to maybe create uh, a Google Drive that would allow speakers to, you know, make live updates to their presentations and upload them um, that then could be shared or or how we want to facilitate it. That, but That's actually something that I would like to ask you because... Um... We have every session in, in chat, but I, I, I guess because we don't, the speakers don't have access, if they are Contributor Summit speakers, they cannot access chat. Because yeah. when you're a normal speaker for like KubeCon or the, the co-located events, you are asked to upload your um, your slides to, to, to chat. So mm -hmm. if some, would something like this be possible or is the overhead too much to give uh, um, KCS uh, speakers access to shit because then it would be one place, which is also good because they are likely to attend also KubeCon so that yeah. they can just also like the way to go is you have the slides in shit in the session that you want yep. to attend. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I would be completely fine with that. Um, that's, you know, if that's something that you as the KCS team would be comfortable doing, um, I, I don't see any issues with that. Obviously for KubeCon, we don't do that just because we have so many, you know, presentations and speakers. It's, it's just a lot. Um, but for this situation, I don't see why we couldn't do it. Um, and obviously anybody that is an admin on Sketch has the ability to then go in and add additional admins or give access to the speakers to do that. Yeah. Um, so okay. I don't see why we couldn't do that. This sounds good. James, you have your hand up. Sorry. Um, could we ask speakers for slides and then make it clear both to speakers submitting them and to attendees that their draft slides and are quite likely to be changed? Um, I don't know if that would help this person or people like them um, if they don't have exactly the same content, like if people had to remove slides and move things around or, or, or such and such. I'm not sure if that would be useful for them, but it might, I'm wondering if it would make people more likely to upload those slides if they don't feel like that, you know, once they've uploaded them to their website, they're kind of like stuck there and and, and they can't change them. I, I think you can change them because I also changed mine quite often uh, in the past. Um, you just have to re-upload them. Sure. I meant more from kind of like a, a feeling kind of thing. Like when I've been a speaker before and I've needed to, to, to submit slides for various conferences, it's always kind of felt that like, you know, when it's uploaded, it's done. I know it isn't, but it feels that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea for the messaging is to say uploading draft slides is okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's still helpful. Yeah. Um, and then we might get a few more. The other thing I'm kind of thinking of is um, let's try to get people to upload to shed but have a Google Drive folder as a backup um, yep. so that if somebody is uploading the night before, they can't figure out their Shed login, they still have somewhere to drop it, and then one of us can actually put it on Shed in the morning. Also, this is a benefit for us. If someone has technical problems, we could jump in with any other device and just share their slides there. Yeah, and I think um, if it would be possible to even add a section to um, the summit website, you know, we could even put a some, something that just says like these are the draft slides, um, you know, available yeah. prior to the event. You know, they are subject to change or something, just so people are aware that they're not necessarily the final versions, and there might be some differences from what they see on site. 
Yeah, let um, let's do this. And we can also basically uh, have the dra the folder then uh, linked on the um, on the summit website um, so that people can just jump right into this. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, a great idea. All right, um, great. So yeah, right. uh, I think that we communicate as soon as we accept speakers that they please. Um, uh, and this is then for comms um, that I uh, know. Sorry, this is not for comms. This is for uh, for content that as soon as the um, confirmation email goes out, we also say, hey, please, uh, we have this folder in place. Um, and I I, uh, I try to have this folder created this week um, that we already have this. And uh, if it's also possible, please upload it to chat. And we link the folder in uh, to the to the summit website, um, and I think that that then we are good to go. Yeah, no, I think that sounds good. Um, I will reach out to the attendee and let them know that uh, we will make our best attempts. This is our first go around at this, um, but we will certainly try our best to accommodate them as as much as possible. So, uh, because uh, and. This this jumps uh, came to my mind uh, also with this. Um, it's also that the only room that will be recorded is the general session room. So the 254, right? Like all of the other KCS. Yes. Yeah. OK. Exactly. Because we had last year the issue that uh, people were requesting to uh, if if there were sessions recorded in other rooms, and I think that we should make this clear that the only recorded room is the uh, the general session room. Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just too cost prohibitive to to do all of the rooms. No, it's fine. Them, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Right. Perfect. Any other update from you, Bian? Uh, next update, I just wanted to share. I know, Josh, you had been asking, but I wanted to share this with everybody. Um, our suggested swag vendor, specifically for the beanies, um, his contact information is here. I've worked with him for several years and know him personally. His name is Brian Pruden. Um, I have already reached out to him and let him know that I would be sharing his information um, and to expect somebody to be in contact with him. So please feel free to reach him out. I did kind of give him a little bit of a background so he knows what to expect, but feel free to reach out directly to him for anything that you need. If you have any questions or issues, please let me know. Okay, uh, I will I will email him. Thank you. No problem. Uh, next, this week on my agenda is I am, we have a list of um, venues, offsite venues that we have, well, that Everybody actually already visited and kind of vetted when they were on site in Salt Lake City. I unfortunately wasn't there, but I will be going through um, the list and reaching out to different venues that I think look like they would be a good option for the celebration and getting some proposals from them. So um, hopefully I'll have some options to share with the team in the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. Um, um, so let me, yeah, um, let me drop you a contact um of a salt lake city local sure um who can provide you with sort of a second opinion on some of those venues yeah that'd be great okay um and last update i have set up sketch and have um, started working on our updates i just got all of our final images and everything so i will get that set up this week and all of the admin invites will be going out so um please check your emails and then you just have to accept the link and then you'll have full access to go in and make updates add the schedule anything that you need to as needed so those should be going out this week thank you very much yeah that's that's it for me for now all right Next up is Josh. Do we have anything else besides the transfer times? Not really. I mean, we went over the videos and the maps um, at the ops meeting last week and figured out um, exactly the sort of slate of volunteers we're going to need, which was one of the open questions. Um, the um, And then the rest of that will wait until we have a firm schedule. Although these are, are these, these are, if these are going to be our time slots, then I can actually prepare sign-up sheets. Um, although there's no point in really trying to get people to sign up 
until late September. I mean, so. the only thing that that is changing is basically if it's if it is a half uh, if we fill in here a half an hour session or an hour session or whatever. So, but basically, then we just combine into one slot, right? Yeah. So, well, and and realistically, I can't get room proctors to sign up until we have most of our session schedule. Exactly. Yeah. People want to proctor the session they want it to be in anyway. Yeah. Um, so um, if if I if I try to get people to sign up now, that means I'll just be swapping a lot of volunteers when the schedule comes out. Yeah. So, OK. All right. Then next up is content with uh, Nitish and Jeremy. Hey, we don't have much of an update today. The um, number of submissions is holding about the same. There are eight total now, but one of them is really uh, just a suggestion that we should recognize subproject leads. Um, specifically, it says I'm not submitting a session. I just think we should recognize subproject leads. Um, so not much change there. Uh, the other thing we wanted to bring up was the discussion we just had about the the transit times and the the, the schedule in general. So no real updates on our side. Great. Thank you very much. Next up is comms with Faker. I saw that you unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you. It's not like my mic is off. <laughs> so we have the same um, updates, like we're going green by now. So we have already sent the design reminder once. And there will be one more design reminder going out by the end of this month. We now are requesting review for um, the CFP reminder that is supposed to be going. So CFP for registration reminder, which should be sent by this Thursday um, after the KubeCon schedule is out. And next, we have a full schedule available on Docs uh, for the next mails that are going very soon. Like three design CFP reminders will be going out. Social media posts will be going out in August. And then there will be three more CFP reminders in September. And one call for unconference message in September, along with a couple of social media posts in September. And nine more communication currently is planned beyond September. So that's the plan up next for the next month and this. Um, other notes that we have or reminders that we have is KubeCon North America um, notifications are coming out by Wednesday. So we need to align our work, that is communications work um, by the same schedule and stuff. So we are planning the same in, internally in our team. And there is a quick GitHub update that uh, Kirstein has updated the KCS comms handbook um, on GitHub and we'll have to get to these eventually. So we need more reviews and stuff. And apart from that, I think Mario, you mentioned something like you requested something for the comms team. I did not very well understand it. Can you repeat? No, no, no that, that's fine. Uh, I, I miss, uh, uh, it, we don't need comms for this because this solely lies with content. Um, that's fine. And uh, the website up, uh, the, the only thing that uh, we need is the website update. Uh, that we add the folder of the slides once it's create uh, once the folder is created, but since I am responsible for the website, I basically mm -hmm. it's my task. Okay, so that's not, any other request from comms team that has to be there in place. Um, I think we are good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Social, Xander. Yeah, things are going good. I think at this point, we're largely waiting on updates for, for the venue, which sounds like are coming soon. So I'm excited to see what we've got on the table for that. Um, still kind of moving forward with uh, activity ideas, but uh, you know, <laughs> despite the fact that it's coming soon, we've got a little bit of time there. Um, I think it's gonna end up looking a lot like it did in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that's what I got for now. All right. Um, next up is registration update. Hello. 
Um, we have no new updates. Numbers are holding pretty steady. Uh, we have 23 total people um, registered, 19 non-staff, of which 18 are approved and one was not approved, and four staff, all of which were approved. That's it. Great. Then, um, sick meet and greet. Is there anyone here today? I don't see anyone. Um, but I think I could take, I could take that one. There's there's no update oh, um, okay. from the last. Yeah, we're still waiting on details from about the project pavilion, and then we'll get more. We'll sync with them. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, we still have plenty of time, right? All right, then. Uh, Mars already gave an update in the channel. He's stuck uh, today at work. Um, there is no major risks or updates from his side this week. Um, is there any? Uh, uh, yes, uh, to put uh, Puja's question, uh, I think uh, everyone that is here can already start signing up uh, as staff. Um, is there anything else that we are missing? If not, I wish you a pleasant week. Uh, just a reminder, I will be out next week. Um, then, uh, Jean, I hope you can take over for me. Yep, no problem. And then we will see each other in two weeks' time. Have a nice week and enjoy the summer. Bye, folks. Bye, everyone. Bye.